All right, so it's the next evening. Um, went ahead and I've got this, got the deer uh, all deboned and the meat's taken care of. And so now we're working on the hide. So what I've done is um, I've went ahead and I've taken the hide out of the refrigerator so it's good and cold. I like to do this with the critters whenever I flush them because it, it kind of hardens that fat up and it just makes them easy to work with. So what I've done is I've, I've put this, this deer hide over top of uh, my big flushing beam and basically I'm just going to flush him out just as you would any normal critter. Now this, this wasn't a very big deer. It's still a fairly decent sized hide compared to you know your normal fur bearing animals. And so uh, you know it's naturally open skin like a beaver so it's really not that much different than if you do uh, say like a beaver pelt. So I've got him on uh, my fleshing beam here and I'm going to start uh, starting at the head area and I'm just working my way down here with the fleshing knife and we're going to flesh this hide all the way just as you would uh, you know any other kind of fur bearing critter. Uh, I find really, uh, you know, on your on your bigger bucks and stuff, sometimes the the fleshing's a little hard. But really, the uh, the fleshing of a deer hide is not that difficult. It's really a pretty pretty easy task. You can tell, um, or you can see rather, I'm not even using the sharp side of my fleshing knife. I'm just uh, I'm just pushing with the dull side and it's really fairly easy. Uh, there's not a whole lot of fat or, or meat chunks left on this and that's primarily due to the way I skinned this deer before I harvested the meat off of him. I, uh, you know, I took my time and, and didn't leave any, uh, any big chunks of, of meat or anything which if you do happen to do that, it's still not that big of a deal. Uh, one thing about a deer hide is, with the exception of the smaller deer on the belly side, it's a pretty forgiving hide. It's, it's a pretty tough hide. You can really, really go to working at it. Um, it's not, not like your thinner skinned critters. The only thing that you will see a difference is, is that, uh, you know, deer have very thick, thick fur and thick under fur. So it actually, uh, it's a little different, you know, just because there's, uh, you know, a lot more fur underneath the hide. So it's, it's kind of like there's a lot more cushion underneath there which like I said is no no big deal uh, you know it's just something that's a little different so anyway uh, as you can see I'm not struggling in the least here at all to take care of this this deer hide it's let me tell you whenever you're used to scraping uh, you know, a bunch of coons or or a bunch of, of beavers or even coyotes, you know, to, to do a, a deer hide is, is really a breeze. And like I said, uh, if you throw that hide in the refrigerator, and this is this is with all critters, if you get that that fat good and cold, it really really pushes off so much easier so just a little tip that I have found I do that with with all all my critters and you can see I am almost done with this entire hide just in the, the short time that I've been talking to you guys about this So we'll just, just finish him up here. By the way, the, those scraps uh, that you're taking off, are, they're really a, a nice treat for, for your dogs. Uh, 
my hound just absolutely absolutely loves the the fleshings off the deer so you can even save them uh, you know freeze them and and give them to them as a or her as a treat I mean you're not gonna get any fresher or more you know homegrown natural organic than that so just that easy I'm back to the head here I'll remove my clamp that I had helping me hold this hide in place and get that last little bit and that's it guys that took what five minutes or so there's an entire deer hide fleshed and ready to be stretched so I'll get set up for that and then I'll show you so guys now we've got our deer hide uh, fleshed and now it's time to stretch him or form him um, now the reason you need to do this is because this thing will shrink up to a ball just like any other critter if you don't some sort of you know stretch him or form him to something so what you see here this is kind of an old-timey way of doing it it works great uh, I've been doing this method for years this is a five by five square that I've made just out of uh, 3 8 laths and what I'm basically doing is kind of in a sense stretching this deer hide out like you would see the old style hooped uh, beaver um, what I've done here is I did a little work here just show you guys I've taken and I've got him suspended from four points uh, from this board and then what I'll do is that now I'll go from the corners and you know it'll be eight and then I'll just keep keep going and going and going until I end up with uh, you know these strings you know essentially every every couple inches all the way around the hide that'll kind of suspend the hide in this form uh, or this picture frame essentially what I've got that'll allow the hide to dry very uniformly and flat um, you know there's this is kind of an old-timey way um, I've also done a method where you tack him up to uh, uh, like a big piece of plywood that also works uh, but of course you've got a big piece of plywood to deal with so you know this uh, this is a really easy method it doesn't take that much time um, you know with the plywood method you've got to tack him so you have a, a ton a ton of tacks you can imagine if you got to go around this guy, you know, at least one an inch on, on this deer hide, uh, you're, you're going to have a lot of waste there, staples or nails, whatever. What I'm doing on this one is uh, my string of choice here is dental floss. Uh, dental floss is surprisingly very strong. It is super cheap. Um, and what I'm doing is I'm just taking a small needle here and... Uh, taking dental floss and just piercing the hide and just working my way around and suspending it once I get about uh, 8 or 12 or 16 strings which would be suspended you know basically a good way around then I'll go to a long string and just kind of start rolling it around and around and around and that'll really uh, really stretch his hide so uh, as far as needle choice also, I see a lot of people wanting to use these giant needles. You can use a Glover's needle, um, which is more of a triangular shape. It's good for piercing this thick hide. I personally like smaller, I don't know if you can see that, it's about three fingers long. A smaller needle, naturally a smaller needle is going to, a uh, smaller diameter is going to pierce the hide, you know, a lot easier than a big thicker needle would. So, you know, each is on on that. But that's basically what I've got going. So um, I'll throw up a little time lapse here, let you guys kind of see my technique for this. And then after we do this, then this hide will get dried and it'll be in a basically a state that it'll be able to set the rest of the winter with no problems. And then come spring, whenever I go to do all my tanning, it'll just be ready to go. So.
All right, so also one quick note. Um, if you guys have, have holes either from your skinning or your fleshing or, uh, you know, bullet holes or broadhead holes, like I have here, here is, here's a broadhead hole. Uh, right here, the way the arrow impacted, I, I cut the, the exit wound out, which is fine. Uh, now this hole here I'm going to leave because by the time I'd sew this, and, and this is so close to the edge of the hide, it's really not worth it. But if you have holes in here, now is the time to sew them. Uh, it's a lot easier to sew them whenever this hide's real green or before it dries. So uh, you can take the dental floss, that works great. Sew the hide up. Uh, nine times out of ten, they're in a circular pattern anyway. Just sew them up like so, and you'll be good to go. All right, so you guys saw the time lapse that took me, you know, just a little over a half hour to do. Uh, you know, it doesn't really take that long. Uh, you can see I've I've got my spacing, you know, around an inch. Um, if you guys are trying this for the first time, you know, don't try to to kind of half-ass it and you know leave big leave it like a scallop, you know, uh, because what will happen is. That hide will shrink inside. If you have a, a you know a piece of string right here and a piece of string right here, as that hide dries, it'll shrink, and you'll end up with this big scallop. And then that area right here and right here is pretty much unusable. You know, so take your time, uh, do a good job, and, and make it look you know uh, real nice and presentable. You're trying to, for the most part, try to maintain as flat of a line as you can. You can see all the way around. I've pretty much maintain that because what's going to happen is after we get this thing tanned you're pretty much going to kind of kind of cut along inside you know and you'll lose that little bit so if you have these big scallops then you're just kind of wasting all your time so anyway uh this thing's not super super tight uh you don't need to have it really tight because what will happen is this thing's going to dry and as it dries it's going to shrink and if you have it too tight then it's just going to basically pull through the hide and you know bad things are going to come of that so you leave it a little loose just you know you guys can see it it's got some play in there uh you know kind of as you would like a beaver if you've ever uh, put a beaver on a, on a board so that's the extent of what we're going to do i'm going to lean this thing up uh you know maintain decent uh humidity and and temperature control on this thing it'll dry up and uh then it'll be basically stable until uh, the end of season whenever I do all my all my tanning. So, like I said, guys, there's really not a lot to this. I get a lot of questions on it, but I figured with this video series, I'd go ahead and put it up now. That way, you know, you guys uh, will have time to prepare this winter. So, appreciate you guys watching, and uh, we'll check back with this project here in a, a few months.